greenhouse. Uh, with this one, there's something I want to... A couple of things Mazda Valley away wise I want to show you with regard to planting and what media they're in. And it's easier to do it here. But first, what I want to show you is I can find him. There it is. Here we have. Here we have. Mastervalia ignea in a black pot because behind the black pot is a clear pot. There's holes in. I bought these from um, Schwerter's last year. And I'm using them mainly specifically whilst using um, coconut husk to put things in. And there's been several conversations had of late of um, Mazda Valleys that are terrestrial. Whilst I've got Vichiana as well, I've got Ignea, and now I've also got Bonplandii, which is also stated to be terrestrial. I haven't looked yet to see how big their roots are, but these tend to be fleshy roots. And I put this in this pot, 31st of March, 21. I overpotted it, as you can see, it wasn't ready to go in a pot that size, but I did it. And as you can see, there's been no ill effects. There's a lot of roots, there's roots coming out the bottom and there's root growth all the way around. It's got a phenomenal amount of root growth. It's now putting up new leaves. Where did I see another one sneak? Another one snuck out there. That one I'm going to break off because he's crinkly. Oh, there is only that. Oh no, there it is. I knew I'd seen it somewhere. There's another one coming right down there. That's another new one. So it's put up one, two, three, possibly four, definitely three, possibly four new roots this summer and I'm going to do the same depending on what it looks like when I take it out of its pot I'm going to do the same with um, Bonplandii but that's a really relatively new plant and I don't know what the roots are like I haven't put any Vichianas in pots like this I have put a couple of Vichiana or at least one in um, coconut husk but it's not been in there long enough yet to um, see any different but if you go down there look look at what we've got in the way of root growth phenomenal amount of root growth all the way around look all the way around the bottom of that plant so I personally think that you could use coconut husk in holy terracotta pots with no problem at all. I'd probably use them with smaller holes, but a bit like these, but it's come to no harm at all. And it needs, um, well, the proof is in what it's doing, really. And it came to no, um, it's just growing phenomenally well. It's, I've used terracotta a lot on um, Mazzies this year, but I've got a big one over there in um, terracotta, the uh, Coriacea, and I think I had five 
five splits. Two big ones have gone in six inch pots. One is in a five inch pot over there. And a couple that were smaller that are in sort of nine centimeter pots because they've still got some catching up to do. But they're only in bark. They're not in any bark and them grow stones. They're in because they've got fleshy roots and they don't need to be in anything else. Even when you even when you mix them and want to get root growth on them, it doesn't always work in moss when you've got fleshy um, fleshy roots. And here's an example, but this is not a Masdevallia, this is a Dracula. He is growing in a mix of small bark. Might be a bit of leaf litter in there, I don't know. It came like this, it had flower spike when I got it. And um, I've left it alone. And you can see roots down there. That's an old root, but there's more. You see where my finger is, you can see more. Let's get out of the shade of that, that's better I can see on the screen. There's more roots going down from there. Whether they've used any um, tree fern fibre, it doesn't look like it. I can't see any gritty bits, but you can see. And that, that is in a completely holy pot all the way around. So I think that is going to put on a display for quite a while, but they're not going to be big fleshy roots on there. They're going to be smaller roots. So um, I'm using it a lot in Draculas now. It's got to get away from moss. The bark lasts longer. A lot of the foreign nurseries are growing in bark. Um, not that we'll get any over from foreign nurseries anymore, but that certainly came, Sunny Marky, I came from um, Grosb, Grosbna in Germany and has done exceptionally well. I've put um, Gigas, I've put, that's still in a lot of moss. The bigger flowers with the larger roots are going to be like the Mazda Valley as they are going to go in a mix of bark, greystone or uh, pumice or um, some large perlite if I can get my hands on it. I tend to use medium bark, in, but that Sonny Markii has used small bark and it loves it. So I might try a couple of the smaller ones in the smaller bark just to see how it works. I like it, I must admit, they're doing good things this year. Now, the next bit I'm gonna film is um, what I've done with the Mazda Valley of Brian Charles and how that's potted upside down in a mesh basket so it hangs from the bottom because it's a Corrie, uh, Corrie is. Goodness gracious me, Sacy across. Um, probably if I turn that round, you can see it over there. I might like higher it up. Oh no, you can see it there. Look. He's there. That's him there. And he's in a giant mesh basket. What a giant, a biggish mesh basket with more moss in than bark. But what I plan to do, if I can reach him, because all of this, I don't want to ruin what I've got, especially these ones coming out of here. So I'm going to take you through the um, potting process and I'm actually going to empty it from the middle. And these are quite large roots as well. 
but it's slimy, it's well overdue. So I'm hoping tomorrow to be able to film that and you can see how it gets repotted in situ without um, losing any of my main growth. It's already putting out its new growth for next year. Put a new one there, put a new one there. Couple that will die, looking a bit grotty. What is that on there? Lord alone knows, I don't. Like yellow powder. There's any yellow powder in here. But yeah, I've got two of those to do. And I still want them to look like that when I've finished. But I need to find an implement to dig it out with because I don't want to stick my fingers in there. Because it's long overdue for doing. Oh, look, there's another new one that went funny there. So we'll catch up with you shortly. Right, hi viewers. This is the bit, the Mazda Valia. We are trying to undo the Mazda Valia. Oh, can't even read that. Mazda Valia Brian Charles, which is potted upside down. And because I've got things coming out of all holes, I'm going to empty it this way and leave what I can intact plant at the bottom see if I can get it all out without damaging what I've got but the feel of it I've got a lot of decent roots here I've also got a lot of moss that is old it's not as bad as it could be What I need is something small and pointy to get through the um, bits. Only this time I am not putting as much moss in. I'm going to put some because it will benefit from it. Looking at these, it's still a good root system that's intact. So, rather than you watching this time consuming task, I'll pause it there and come back to you when I've got the worst of it out. Right, we're back on. Here we have Brilliant, brilliant root system. Considering I thought it would be a whole lot worse than this. There's still some dead bits to pull out. But what we've got to do is actually pack some moss underneath there to keep it secure from dropping out. So, where are you, Mr. Moss? There you are. And I reckon that should be enough. What I'm also going to do is soak it. Easier to get in there. And then I need a layer to go out round the side as well. Because this will not be easy. need it to stop pulling anything through the top of the plant. 
which will come out there. So I need some to go under there as well because you can see spaces. That's the harder one because of where the um, leaves are going from, growing from. If I can persuade you to go around there a little bit more. Like that. And then you come back over here. There's a whole lot more to push down there. And there. Plus I need a bit more in there. A bit more. I'm going to need some more of this anyway. More there. the roots to get back in and then put some around the side With what I'm going to put in the middle is some bark mix well actually probably just bark because that is all I want around the side but I do want some bark in the middle with some charcoal in I need something to go down the middle of there make a little hole in the centre of those roots it's like a suet pudding this a suet pud without the suet and next time I do this I think I will need a bigger basket luckily I've got a couple come on we want Charcoal as well in there. And then I won't have this padded mess of moss, will I? What I need to bear in mind doing this though, is that I didn't do this last time, I had purely moss in there. So I need to be careful with watering this time. Right, so you sit there. I'll wet some more moss. have our pastry base if we were making a pudding which we're not I do need some more moss down the side this doing this is you're used to putting baskets on the table put this basket on the table it will squish and break leaves but 
you can get out of my way. Down there. You. Can get up here. Now I think that will do the job. Have I got lots down there? Yes, yes, yes. A bit of padding in there as it goes. A little bit of padding in there for that hole. Don't want holes for things to fall out of, do we? There you go. Oh no, stop it. Oh, typical. Typical, typical. I'm tipping it up. It's falling out the top. Typical. Right, get in. And squish you. Going to squish you. Right, there we have him. All done and dusted. My suet crust pastry with my suet crust top, ready for the oven. Not, but that's the that's the um, basic idea. And there's still room for these roots to go around. And what you should do, my little beauty, is grace us all with so many more flowers. Got new leaves there, three new leaves, baby leaves come in there, another baby there. These ones that are going straight through, that is a baby coming through. No, I've broken that one. Oh well, that's to be expected to be fair. So I've broken two leaves, which for me is a minor miracle. Now, what I need to do is take him and hang him up. And he'll be good to go. Where's my hanger? There's my hanger. So what we have here is another way. Let's lay you down. Of using holy pots to grow something like this and the reason behind this is that the hybrid as I've said before is one of the parents is um, sasia and sasia is a hanging plant and this if you put it in a pot the right way up it flops all over the place if you hang it upside down like this it's brilliant and just grows it's got the freedom to grow now soak the top, push it down a bit more, there, and then we are good to go, as you can see, with him to go back in the um, cool greenhouse. All I've got to do now, don't knock my plants over please, all I have to do now is do the second one. But I don't need to film that because I'm showing you this one. Now I can't see the date on there, I wish I could. I need to put the new date on. And then have a look at the other one and see if I can see the date on there. Repot today is the 18th, 9.21, and I'll have a look in the other one, and there without too much trauma, he's ready for it to grow away and grow us into the next season. So, on that note, with different ways of potting things in holy 
baskets. It's a good thing for moss because it lets lots of air into the moss. But the roots don't grow on the root either. You see, they didn't grow outside the pot before. They contained inside. They weren't too rotten. And last time they were in purely moss. What I've done this time is put a bit of perlite bark, and I've only used fine bark, and um, charcoal in the middle so that we do away with then having that centerpiece where the roots because it's in moss are dead that's the theory this is the test for it so um i'll catch you on the next one stay safe bye bye now mm -hmm.